Kaushal, and on behalf of Penguin Random House India, I would like to welcome you to what I promise will be a great evening. I'm delighted to introduce Christoph Jaffalo, who will be talking about his new book, The Islamic Connection, South Asia and the Gulf, which he co-edited with Ms. Lawrence Lewer, who could, unfortunately couldn't join us this evening. It is an honor to be publishing this collection of very timely and topical essays, with contributions from Aisha Siddiqa, Radhika Gupta, Wahid Ghan, and Christoph and Lawrence themselves, among numerous others, and covering a wide range of topics. Christoph is the author of The Pakistan Paradox and the editor of Pakistan at the Crossroads. He's a senior research fellow at the Center for International Studies and Research in Paris, and is an expert on South Asia, focusing on nationalism and democracy, Hindu nationalism and ethnic conflicts. Christoph will be in conversation with Dr. Ali Khan, who is Assistant Professor of History and Political Science at Ashoka University, and an expert on Muslim South Asia and its corresponding networks and connections in the wider Muslim world. May I request Christoph and Ali to please come on the stage to formally unveil the book. part of the world, South Asia, and what we call the Middle East or the Gulf countries, we preferred uh, this because it captured the um, so somewhat uh, complementary complementarity between Iran, the GCC countries, and Saudi Arabia. Uh, historians, uh, James only, for instance, have done the study of, of the connections between these two worlds. But for some reason, after independence, that relation has not been scrutinized. So we started to work on it something like um, six, seven years ago. There is, by the way, in the room, a student of mine, Nitya, who attended some of the workshops preparing this um, um, book. And Ali came and presented his own views in Paris uh, during one of these sessions. And to begin with, we did not know what we would focus upon. So we had, for instance, a full year dedicated to military relations between uh, these two parts of the world, which is, by the way, even more complicated to study, but terribly interesting. Eventually, we focused on the Islamic connections with one specific research question that I will now somewhat um, delineate, that is, it's terribly interesting to see how loosely connected to Saudi Arabia, subcontinental Islam has been for centuries. Of course, today, when you look at uh, the rise of uh, Sunni militancy in Pakistan, you can't imagine how unimportant this brand of Islam was in that part of South Asia that is today Pakistan. But that was the largest chunk of time. Uh, a part of the world turning its back to uh, this Arabia. And the reason why this situation remained such for a long time was, of course, the um, importance of Sufism as giving a specific quality to South Asian Islam. So we, in the book, and me in particular, uh, explore the um, Dargah culture, this culture that is rooted in the Indian territory. The Sufi saints, more than Shisti, but they can be Shistias, they can be Najmandias, they can be uh, Suravardias, they can be Kadriyas. We are coming from that part of the world, of Central Asia, and the Middle East, but, for instance, did not go on Hajj for pilgrimage. It's even embarrassing for some of the geographies 
to today have to say no, they did not go because there was no need to go. In fact, when you continue in the same vein, you realize that none of the Mughal emperors went on Arch. They also did not feel the need to go. Why? Because Islam was rooted in this territory. And the Dargahs were the places where you had to go on pilgrimage. That was the pilgrimage route. Why should you go to Mecca when you had <coughs> Ajmer Dargah? So there is a territorialization of Islam. You know, it's very interesting because uh, Savarkar in 2030 will say, look at Muslims, they are looking west. No, they were not looking west at all. They were looking down, so to speak, on their own land. And this is something you could all see, also see in the way rulers, be they Shia, be they Sunni, be they um, Mughal emperors or sultans, patronized the local places. And uh, there is, for instance, a very interesting equation between the Shistias and the Mughal emperors. 